Siaran langsung ini dibawakan khas kepada anda oleh Akademi Cuba Malaysia. Tumpukan perhatian anda. Siaran langsung akan bermula sebentar lagi. Link sijil akan diberikan di hujung siaran ini. Pastikan diisi dalam tempo yang ditetapkan. Terima kasih. Hai, salam sejahtera dan hai semua para guru, ibu bapa dan semua pelajar sekalian. Selamat datang ke Pusat Tuition Academy Duba dengan usaha sama EDD Malaysia dan Grab Guru Malaysia. Bermula percuma, selamanya percuma. Kita per- cikgu perkenalkan diri dahulu, nama saya Cikgu Pei, kini menjadi kolej tingkatan 6 Tung Fatimah Melaka selaku moderator pada petang ini. Pada petang ini kita akan bersiaran langsung dari channel Cikgu Hasnita. Siapa yang belum subscribe silalah tekan butang subscribe sebagai tanda sokongan kepada Cikgu Hasnita. Dan Cikgu Hasnita kini mengajar di SNK Bagan Jaya Pulau Binang dan kita akan belajar subjek tingkatan 4 dengan tajuk baru tajuk uh, 6 uh, Light and Optic. Dan hari ini kita akan uh, masuk subtopik yang pertama, Reflection of Light. So, kelas ini akan berlangsung lebih kurang satu jam. Sebelum kita teruskan kelas, suka cikgu ingatkan kepada semua pelajar dan penonton yang ingin menghantar komen, sila gunakan bahasa yang sopan dan gambar profil yang bersesuaian untuk tontonan umum. So, cikgu percaya semua yang hadir kepada kelas petang ini merupakan pelajar-pelajar cemerlang dan mari kita tunjukkan disiplin yang terbaik. So, sila fokus pada isi kandungan yang akan disampaikan oleh cikgu Hasnita. Semoga kelas kita pada petang ini dapat dimanfaatkan sepenuhnya oleh para pelajar. Uh, dan anda boleh dapatkan kita punya, cikgu Hasnita punya itu uh, soft copy bahan okay, dengan link yang ditunjukkan. Okay, so dengan ini saya serahkan kelas kepada Cikgu Hasita. So silakan Cikgu Hasita. Okay, baik. Terima kasih sahabat saya Mr. P dari SMDK Tinggi Melaka sebagai uh, moderator kita pada petang ini. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, salam sejahtera dan salam uh, selamat petang semua. Salam Malaysia Madani. Sorry Mr. P tadi dari KTE sebenarnya. Kolej Tingkatan 6 Tun Fatimah Melaka. <laughs> Saya sebut nama sekolah. Uh, apa cikgu kok tadi silap. Okey tak maaf ya. Eh. Okey jadi uh, sebelum kita mula seperti biasa yang beragama Islam Marilah kita mulakan dengan doa belajar dan bagi yang bukan Muslim anda bolehlah bertafakur mengikut uh, kepercayaan masing-masing Al-Fatihah. Amin amin ya rabbal alamin. Okey jadi sebenarnya uh, sekarang ni musim-musim peperiksaan ya Mr. Peh. Uh, pelajar tingkatan 4 kita rata-rata sedang menduduki peperiksaan pada masa ini tapi tidak mengapa uh, kita jadikan slot pada petang ini sebagai salah satu medan untuk anda ulang kaji tajuk 6.1. Uh, Mudah-mudahan dapat membantu anda menjawab peperiksaan nanti dan bagi murid tingkatan 5 calon SPM anda boleh jadikan ini juga sebagai satu slot ulang Tadi kita ada Yuva Nation di sana. Ya, yeah, good evening Yuva. Thank you for joining us. Uh, boleh bagi tahu tak Yuva from where you are? Dari mana? Yuva Nation ni guru ke atau pelajar? Uh, cuba bagi tahu sikit. Anda dari sekolah mana? Okey. Jadi without further ado, Mr. Pei mungkin boleh kongsikan slide saya. Okey, sebelum itu anak-anak pelajar anda boleh dapatkan link bahan ini secara percuma sahaja melalui uh, link PDF yang kami kongsikan. Anda boleh tengok pada skrin, pada live chat di sana, ada juga pada deskripsi video. Boleh muat turun dan cetak keluar secara percuma sahaja. Dalam itu ada nota dan ada juga contoh beberapa latihan yang berkaitan dengan tajuk ini yang baru saja cikgu update daripada soalan-soalan percubaan SPM pada tahun ini. Okey, jadi without further ado, 
Claire does begin our class with our weekly schedule for this week ini adalah jadual kelas tuition percuma fizik pada minggu ini telah disampaikan pada Jumaat lepas. Tajuk terakhir untuk tingkatan 5 teori fotoelektrik Einstein oleh teachers Linda Nodin. Siapa yang tertinggal kelas ini jangan lupa, jangan risau anda boleh saksikan semula siarannya di pergi saja ke channel YouTube teachers Linda Nodin dan juga boleh ditonton di channel Cikgu Izian. Okey dan pada petang ini saya akan teruskan dengan 6.1 Reflection of Light uh, iaitu the first topic for Form 4 uh, in DLP. Hi uh, from SMK Jalan Bukit Kajar. Okey thank you. Okay then So you can respond to us later Okay Ini adalah barisan sukarelawan guru fizik Di Akademi Youtuber dari seluruh Malaysia Cikgu-cikgu inilah yang telah banyak menerbitkan Video PDPC sama ada dalam bahasa Melayu Ataupun bahasa Inggeris untuk kelas DLP So harap anda dapat Manfaatkan video-video ini So di mana boleh Tonton video ini anda boleh muat turun aplikasi ini apps Academy YouTuber melalui Android anda pergi saja ke Google Play Store dan muat turun secara percuma. Apps dia ringan saja dan dia tidak akan membebankan uh, storage handphone anda. So kita ada ni bermula daripada video prasekolah hinggalah ke pra university untuk beberapa uh, subjek yang tertentu. Okay. So students, let us begin our lesson today with the first learning standard on refraction of light. It is 6.1.1 to describe refraction of light. Kita nak perihalkan fenomena pembiasan cahaya. Actually, you have learned refraction in 5.4 uh, uh, before refraction of wave. So this one, we are going to focus more on refraction of light. Alright students, so, so let us begin with a few induction set here. You can see there are three GIF there in oil and in water. Okay, and second you can see the coin is visible after a bowl, uh, the bowl is filled with water. See, uh, it is now visible uh, once the empty bowl is filled with water. And then third you can see the the direction of the arrow painted on the wall show a reverse in direction after the glass is filled with water. So actually this is not a magic show. There's nothing magic there. It's actually all to do with one phenomenon in physics we call as, yes, refraction of light. Okay, the thermometer appears and the coin visible after coal reef refraction of light. So to understand refraction of light, so first let us take a look at a few characteristics of light. Okay, I believe you've learned before light can pass through transparent objects such as air and glass. And students, they travel uh, in straight line when passing through uh, this transparent medium from one to another. Okay, then how does the light travel in a medium? So this slide is going to tell you how light travel in a medium. So if you see in our diagram here, we have two medium there. The first one is air and the second medium is glass block. And you can see that once the light entering the second medium from A, you can see the direction is changes. It shows changes in direction. So how or why uh, the light experience uh, changes in direction? So here is the explanation. Number one, light ray appear to be a band. All right. right? Mean it changed direction. So we understand here when light travel from the air, the first medium to deuce by the particle of the glass. Okay? The particle of the glass is uh, closer to one and another compared to the particle of air. So this arrangement of particle which is closer to one and another will cause the reduction in the speed of light when traveling through glass particle. And then you can see again when it came back to the air again it bent. 
okay, to another direction. So here we understand the change in speed of light in the glass will cause us the light ray to change direction. All right, so this is the uh, basic understanding to understand refraction. So what is the definition for it? when the laser light is propagating uh, from the air entering the glass block you can see it bend or the direction changes so we write refraction of light as a phenomenon where direction of light changes when propagating through two medium of different optical density due to the changes in the speed of light phenomena pembiasan cahaya Ia ditakrifkan sebagai bahan yang berlainan ketumpatan optik yang disebabkan oleh perubahan kelajuan cahaya. Boleh ya? Okay, so definition for refraction of light. Okay, second, these are all the important terms you must know very well if you want to understand refraction of light in a better way. The first line is normal. So what is normal? Normal is a line perpendicular to the boundary. Okay, garis yang uh, 90 darjah di antara uh, sempadan di antara dua medium in bahasa. Second terms is incident ray, sinar tujuh. Incident ray is the ray in the first medium. Okay, directed to the boundary. And then we have angle of incident, sudut so tujuh which is the angle between the incident ray and the normal and this angle is labeled with I, okay? And then we have a refracted ray, sinar bias, okay? What is refracted ray, student? It is the ray in the second medium, so which propagate from the boundary uh, through the second medium. And angle of refraction is an angle between refracted ray and the normal. Sudut pembiasan adalah sudut di antara sinar bias dan juga garis normal. And this angle is labeled with uh, R. Alright. And last but not least, there is one another term there called angle of deviation. Uh, the symbol is a sigma, okay, angle of deviation. So what is angle of deviation? It is the angle between the refracted ray and the original path of the light in the first medium. If I can magnify for you, as you can see in this diagram. So uh, this is our eye, angle of incidence in the first medium uh, next to the normal incident ray. And this is our angle of refraction. And there it is, the angle of deviation, okay? Angle of, uh, the incident ray in the first medium and the refracted ray in the second medium. And you can see here, the higher the angle of deviation, uh, the smaller the angle of refraction. It means the light will bend more towards normal. Okay, I repeat, the higher the angle of deviation, the smaller R will be. It shows that. Uh, the light band more towards normal, mean the speed is reduced for some more. Okay. okay, so done with the terms. Okay, now students, in the definition just now I give you, uh, refraction occur when light ray pass through between two medium of different optical densities. So here is a very important term for you to understand what is the difference between density and optical density? Okay, first, what is density? Density defined as mass per unit volume. Okay, density is mass per unit volume. The formula is uh, rho equal to m over v, mass per unit volume. And here you can see we have water and oil. It can it form two separation layer. Why? Because water is denser compared to oil. So water will stay at the bottom and uh, the oil will float on top because of the lower density. Okay. But when we talk about optical density, again, we compare oil and water. Optical density defined as the measurement of the ability of an optical material, which is the transparent material. So here, oil and water are both transparent material. So ability of the transparent material to absorb or to bend light that travels through it. 
So this is meant by optical density. And here you can see when we place the thermometer in uh, two liquid, first is oil and uh, water, you can see that uh, the thermometer in the oil shows more bending effect, okay, compared to uh, the bending effect show in uh, the water. So here we understand oil has a higher or greater optical density compared to water which means it's able to bend light more compared to water. So when we talk about refraction, we are referring to optical density instead of density of the material. Okay, Chia Yao pun datang support kita petang ni. Thank you Chia Yao for your unwavering support. Alhamdulillah kami baik-baik saja di sini. Okay, so students here I would like to highlight density is not equal to optical density, okay? Okay, next student. So what is the relationship between optical density and speed of light? Okay, as I mentioned just now, when light travel through medium of different optical density, so the changes in light speed will cause the changes in direction. So we say the light is refracted. Okay, then a medium that can reduce the speed of light is said to have a higher optical density. Again, uh, when we compare oil and water, you can see the bending effect in oil is more. So we say oil has a higher optical density compared to water. And then next, the higher the optical density of the material, so the lower the speed of light propagating through it which means it will able to bend more light from the original path and causes larger angle of deviations. So I hope you are clear until this point uh, what is optical density and its relationship with the speed of light. But finally, a medium with higher optical density will cause the light to bend more towards the normal. All right? Okay, then... Okay, next, refraction of light from A to glass block. All right, so here, the first case, figure A, we have a light traveling from A, the first medium, entering a glass block, the second medium. Okay, so based on figure A, this is figure A, so as we can see, there is an angle of incidence shows there and the angle of refraction, and you can see that uh, when entering glass from A, uh, the light refracted towards normal. It bent towards normal. So here we can say light ray bent towards normal when travel from a medium of low optical density, which is air, to a medium of high optical density, the glass block. Second, why? This is because the speed of light decreases as it travels from optically less dense medium to a denser medium. And due to this, student, angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence. So remember, when the light refract towards normal, so the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence. R is smaller than I. All right? Okay, then here is the second situation in figure B. Now we have a, a, a light ray traveling from glass block. Uh, entering air, the second medium. Okay, reverse to the first situation. So our uh, light now coming from the in both diagram, uh, it refract away from normal where R is greater than I. So what happened here? So we can see from the figure light ray bend away from the normal when travel from a medium of high optical density, which is the glass block, to a medium of low optical density, which is the air. Okay, second, you can see why this is because the speed of light in medium to a less dense medium. And finally, we can see here angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence refracted away from normal. So I hope you are clear with what happened in figure A and figure B. And if you notice, 
here there's one GIF uh, showing that one kind of a fish that we call it as an archer fish. Uh, archer, uh, it's prey or an insects which is normally live above the water surface. So this archer feeds upon step of reflection in order to get uh, the insect. So how it can aim uh, the speed from its mouth so it can get uh, the insect there uh, in, a, in a sharp way. Kita nampak macam mana dia menggunakan uh, teknik pembiasan cahaya untuk menangkap mangsa yang berada di atas permukaan air. So does this fish learn physics Mr. P? <laughs> macam mana dia tahu menggunakan concept reflection so if I menggunakan fizik ini. Okay. Then done with the first one student to describe refraction of light. Okay, next student, second point, uh, 6.1.2. This is the second learning standard to explain refractive index. Apa itu index biasan? So what if refractive index with the symbol of N? Okay, student. So refractive index number one, it is defined as the ratio. Okay, ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in medium. Okay, so remember when talking about refraction, we must uh, at least ha uh, have two medium. Mesti ada sekurang-kurangnya dua medium. So nisbah laju cahaya dalam vacuum kepada laju cahaya dalam medium kita panggil sebagai indeks biasan. Okay, so this is the formula for refractive index, speed of light in vacuum which is also C, the symbol, and then speed of light in medium, which is given by the symbol V. So, N equal to C over V. All right. Later, we will see how to apply this equation. So, speed of light, this is a constant, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. Okay. And speed of light in medium, it depends on what medium we are using. Okay, for example, we have a diagram here I cropped from your textbook. It shows a light traveling from water into three different medium. Okay, if we can uh, zoom a bit here, uh, the first diagram, uh, the light is traveling from water entering perspex. And given the angle of incidence there, 50, and angle of refraction in the second medium, 42.8. And then... So Second diagram, we have a light travel from water with the same angle of incidence 50, but you can see the angle of refraction at class is uh, smaller, 37.9 compared to the angle of refraction in perspex. And then the third diagram, and now the light ray traveling from water entering diamond. Again, with the same angle of incidence 50, but in the second medium diamond, you can see the angle of refraction becomes smaller, 24 point nine so what causes the difference in the value of angle of refraction in this three medium perspex glass fin and diamond it is to do with the refractive index of each medium okay uh, sorry so we go back to the previous step. So this is a table shows to you a few value of refractive index for several medium. Okay first vacuum and air the refractive index is one. Okay, for water, it is 1.33, also stated there. For first plain, it is 1.66 and 2.42 for diamond. So if you look at the relationship here, the higher the refractive index, the, the smaller the angle of refraction. Okay, I repeat, as you can see, the higher the refractive index of the medium, the smaller the angle of refraction in that medium. All right. Okay, then students. Now the relationship between refractive index and bending ability of a medium. So here we compare water with refractive index of 1.33 and diamond with a refractive index of 2.42. All right. Uh, the light is coming from the same medium from A entering water and second from A entering diamond. And there you can see an an angle mark with theta 1, this is the angle of deviation in water and theta 2, the angle of deviation in diamond, okay? So, refractive index, as I mentioned before, it tells us the degree. 
to which light band when traveling from vacuum or from A to a medium? Okay. Uh, and students, it indicates the bending ability of the medium. So in a simple word, we can say refractive index shows the bending ability of the medium. Okay. A medium with a higher refractive index able to bend more light. Okay, I repeat, a medium with a higher refractive index able to bend more light where the angle of deviation will be greater and angle of refraction will be smaller. All right. Okay, then. Okay, this is what I talked just now. Higher refractive index, the greater the bending effect because the light travel uh, at the lower speed in a higher refractive index medium. All right. Okay. So finally, it will produce smaller value of R as the light refract more towards the normal. Okay. So I hope you can follow me up till this point. You maybe can give us some response in the live chat. Kalau anda boleh ikut saya, uh, boleh type dekat live chat itu. Okay. Clear teacher. Boleh cikgu. Okay. Then student, the third learning standard. Uh, to conceptualize Snell's law. Okay, so here in this topic, we have one law which we can apply to solve a problem involving refraction of light. Uh, the first formula tadi yang itu, uh, refractive index formula. So this is the second formula, Snell's law formula. All right, students, so what is Snell's law state? Okay, first, you must understand law of refraction. Apa itu hukum pembiasan? Okay, law of refraction highlight uh, one thing. Okay, it say that all the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal meet at one point and they are in the same plane. Dia sama dengan uh, hukum pantulan. Okay, similar to law of reflection. Okay? Sinar tujuh, sinar bias, garis normal, semuanya berada pada satah yang sama. So this is the incident ray, the refracted ray, the normal, they are all meet at one point and in the same plane. Ya, Syam Nurin Mirza. Ya betul lama tak jumpa Syam. Apa khabar? Uh, dah besar dah. Syam dah form berapa dah sekarang? Uh, terima kasih join kelas fizik kita pada petang ini. Okay, cikgu harap anda sihat eh. Alright. Okay, students. So this is what stated by Snell's law. Ini adalah apa yang dikatakan oleh hukum Snell. Okay. Uh, N1 sin theta 1 equal to N2 sin theta 2. So what is N? As you can see in this diagram, I zoom it for you. N refer to the refractive index. So N1 refer to the refractive index of the first medium. Okay, theta 1 is the angle of incidence here and we have N2 is the refractive index of the second medium and theta 2 is the refractive angle. Okay, refracted angle. Okay, so uh, how we relate all these four quantities. So it is related here. So uh, if we uh, rearrange this formula, so N2 divide N1 will be equal to uh, sine theta 1 divide sine theta 2. Okay, N2 divide N1 will be equal to sine theta 1 uh, divide sine theta 2. Okay, and Medium 1 is air. Okay, when medium 1 is air, when the first medium is air, then the refractive index uh, of N1 is 1. Okay, and medium 2 is uh, N because it depends on one medium. So, we can simplify this formula. Okay, so where N1 is 1, so we have leave N2 equal to sine theta 1 equal to sine theta 2. So when we simplify this formula, it becomes N equal to sine I divide sine R. All right, so N equal sine I divide sine. So this is Snell's law formula. N equal to sine I divide sine R. All right, okay, later we'll see example of question where to apply Snell's law formula, N equal to sine I divide sine R. Okay, then uh, 
Uh, how do we understand this formula? The ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence, which is sine i to the sine of angle of refraction, is constant. Constant means it will give you the, uh, the refractive index. Okay, so this is what's stated by uh, Snell's law. Okay, then students. Okay, the fourth learning standard. Uh, this is a few experiments that can be conducted to determine refractive index for certain medium. Uh, here we are going to see two examples. The first uh, for glass block and second to find the refractive index for perspex. Okay, so how is the experiment conducted? Actually, you can find this in your textbook also. The first is to study relationship between I and R and to determine refractive index of glass block. So this is our procedure from number one to number six. Later, you will you can take time to read uh, the procedure or some more. And this is the variable involved. So our MV is the angle of incidence. So the ray box is placed at a different angle of incidence. And this is our responding variable. Later, you will see the angle of refraction will be different for each angle of incidence. And our constant variable is the refractive index of the glass block. Mean we are using the same medium here, glass block. All right. Okay, so uh, this is the result for example of result for this experiment. Okay, so this is the angle of incidence we are using. We start with 15, 30, 45, 60, 70, and 80. And this is the angle of refraction we measure for each uh, yang kita peroleh daripada experiment. Uh, 10, 19, 28, 35, 39, and 41. So you can see when the angle of incidence increases, the angle of refraction also increases. And this is sine I we calculated using uh, uh, calculator and also sine r okay so sine 15 0 0.2588 or sine r means sine 10 you press your calculator sine 10 so you will get 0 0.1736 so uh, the rest is uh, the same okay uh, sine 30 is 0 0.5 sine 19 when you press your calculator, it will give you 0 0.3256. And this is the uh, the ratio of sine i to sine r. Uh, sine i divide sine r. So you will get 1.49, here 1 1.54, 1.51, 1.51, 1 1.49, 1 1.50. So uh, about approximately the same. So when we find the average for sine i over sine r actually it will give you the refractive index of the glass block and this is the graph we can plot for r against i it will be a straight line at the first but towards the end it will show a curved line okay okay and then this is the second graph that you can plot graph of sine i against sine r it will be a straight line graph from the origin showing that sine r is directly proportional to sine r okay so students from this experiment uh, this is the discussion and conclusion we can make number one we can see that angle of refraction in the optical density medium is less okay uh, then the angle of incidence in the optical less dense so if you to go back to the table, you can see the angle of incidence always greater than the angle of refraction. Okay, showing that uh, the light ray is bent towards the normal. Okay, from light travel from water uh, from A entering glass block, it is refracted towards normal. So that's why R is always smaller than I. Okay, uh, next we can see. When angle of incidence increases, angle of refraction also increases. So as you can see down the table, as I increases, R also increases. But R always smaller than I. Okay. Then third, we can uh, discussion. We can make the graph of sine I, the second graph. Again, sine R is a straight line graph through the origin, showing that sine R directly proportional to sine R, as I mentioned just now. Okay. And fourth discussion, we can check from the graph the gradient of the graph of sine I. Again, sine R is constant. So how to determine the gradient? Uh, the mathematical formula y2 minus y1 divide x2 minus x1. And here for this experiment, you will find the gradient of the graph is 1.5. And this gradient actually gives us the refractive index of the 
glass block. So the refractive index of the glass block here is 1.5. All right. Okay. So uh, uh, that is the experiment. So only glass block changes with perspectives, and then later you will find uh, the gradient of the graph will be different. Remember, gradient will show the refractive index of the uh, perspectives. All right. Okay. So this is our fit learning standard to explain real depth and a uh, uh, refraction of uh, light. Okay, students. Okay, I believe you normally, uh, you used to experience this. When you enter a pool, okay, you will find that yours, uh, your body appears to be shorter. Uh, biasakan kalau kita masuk dalam kolam mandi, setepih, uh, kita nampak badan kita kelihatan pendek daripada uh, kebiasaannya. Uh, we will appear to be shorter compared to our real height. So what is the causes for that uh, observation? Apa yang menyebabkan badan kita kelihatan pendek apabila masuk ke dalam uh, air? Okay, similar things happen here. A coil appears to be closer to the surface of water when you see from top because light ray from the real coin travel through water to the surface. So what happened? The light ray are then refracted away from the normal because the speed of light increases in air. So we have a coin there at the base of uh, the glass. So when light travel from the coin and then comes out to the air, so it will be refracted away from the normal. So our uh, human eyes or the observer will see uh, the image of the coin appear to be closer to the surface compared to the real object which is actually at the base or at the bottom of the uh, glass. All right. So uh, here actually to do with the uh, refractive index formula. Uh, we can find refractive index the medium. It can be expressed when uh, related to depth where n equal to real depth divide apparent depth. Okay, so this is the second uh, formula for refractive index. The first one, n equal to sin i divide sin r for Snell's law. Okay, when we know the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction, we can use the first formula N equal to sine I and sine R. But here in the second situation, we don't have I and R, but we know the apparent depth and the real depth of the uh, water. So we can apply the second formula N equal to real depth H, capital H, sometimes use capital D as depth. Divide apparent depth. Apparent depth means the depth of the image. All right, which is uh, small h, uh, sometimes using small d. Okay, later we will check also a few example of question how to apply this formula. Okay, similar things here. Uh, we have a coin uh, on the swimming pool at the base of the swimming pool. So uh, the light that traveling from the coin there when uh, reach the surface of the water will be refracted away from normal. So what happened, this observer will see the image of the coin appear to be uh, closer to the surface compared to the actual object at the base. Okay, So uh, due to refractive index and due to refraction, an object always appear to be closer to the uh, surface when you see them from any angle, uh, either uh, from a straight angle or from a certain angle from the right side. All right. Okay, kalau kita tengok dari atas atau dari tepi, uh, image akan sentiasa kelihatan hampir kepada permukaan berbanding dengan objek yang sebenarnya berada uh, lebih jauh di, di dasar permukaan. Okay, students. So, this is the six learning standard. Udah, eh, Mr. P. So, this is is another experiment to study or to determine refractive index uh, for a medium. Okay, next to John. So, experiment yang wajib lah or the last block and perspex. Okay, so how this experiment is conducted, students? So, this is our 
procedure. Uh, again, you can read from number one to number eight. Anda boleh baca lah. Okay. So, this is all the apparatus required. We need a beaker, filler, and then we need a retort stand. A few pin there to mark the position and also a, a ruler. So, we use two pin here. The pin O as the object and pin I is to mark where is the position of the image appear on the eye of the observer. So, our variable here, uh, the real depth. Okay, we are going to adjust the real depth. I mean, we are using a uh, different level of water. Okay, and then the responding variable will be the apparent depth. So, when we use different volume of water, later you will see the position of the image of the pill will be changes. And our constant variable is the refractive index of water. I mean, we are using the same liquid every time, which is water. Because when you use another liquid, definitely the refractive index will be changed. So, we maintain the type of water used in this experiment. So, we are going to begin... Uh, with a uh, first value, a uh, beaker is filled up with water to depth of cm, 40 cm, 50 cm, and 50 cm. So we add in more and more water, so we will see the apparent depth will be changes. And finally, we plot a graph of H, uh, real depth, against H, the apparent depth. Okay, so this is the come up for this experiment, student, the real depth. So, from 20 and ended with 60. And the apparent depth, you can see uh, when a real depth is 20, the image of the coin appear at the depth of 15 cm measure using a ruler. And when the real depth increased to 30, the apparent depth also increased to 23. Okay. And finally, when the real depth is 60, the apparent depth also increased to 45 uh, centimeter. All right. Okay, then this is the graph that we plot. So, you'll find it will be a straight line graph from the origin showing that H is directly proportional to H real depth directly proportional to the uh, apparent depth or apparent depth directly proportional to the, to the real depth. Okay. So, this is the come up for this experiment. First, we understand apparent depth always less than real depth. Definitely. Right? Second, uh, we find from our table uh, when H increases, when the real depth increases, the apparent depth also increases. And the graph is a straight line graph passing through the origin showing that apparent depth directly proportional to the real depth. Okay, then uh, when you count for the gradient of the graph as for here, uh, the gradient is 1.55. So can you tell me what is this 1.55 represent? Yeah, very good. It represents the refractive index of the uh, water, 1.55. So, conclusion we can make for this experiment, the ratio of the real depth to the apparent depth will give us the refraction index of the water, which is N. Okay, and the value for N here is 1.55. Okay, students. So, Mr. Pei, uh, nampaknya kita sudah sampai ke bahagian latihan. I think this is the most important part for every discussion. So, you may, uh, siapa yang download, siapa yang cetak nota tu, bolehlah anda cuba, kita cuba jawab bersama-sama. Or you can download later and you can go back to this video to see the full answer. Okay. Okay, students. So, let us solve together a few problems related to refraction of light. Kita cuba bersama-sama. So, let us begin with objective question first. Okay, if you know the answer, you can share yours in a live chat. Dan siapa tahu jawapan, boleh kongsikan jawapan anda dekat live chat. Okay, first we have diagram 18. It shows a beam of light traveling from medium X into air. Okay, students. So, the question is very simple. What is the refractive index of medium X? Apakah uh, index biasan bagi medium X? Okay, if you refer back to the formula for refractive index, uh, so we can use the Snell's law formula here. N equal to sine I divide sine R. But you have to be careful because we have a few angle given there and students to apply this formula n equal to sine i divide sine r sine i itu i itu must be in the a medium 
I itu must be in air or in vacuum. And R itu is the the second medium. So here, uh, I ini the uh, the angle of incidence in A, and R is our angle of refraction in medium X. Okay, so here we apply principle of reversibility of light. Alright, so we reverse the direction of the arrow. So sine I is sine 70. So this is our angle of incidence in air. And our R is sine 40. Okay, you have to be careful. Jangan salah ambil eh. Jangan ambil sine 50 or your answer will be uh, wrong then. So sine 70 divide sine 40. So answer is 1.46. Okay, 1.46. Okay, another thing, student, uh, when you calculate uh, the value for refractive index, kalau you tengok, it must be greater than 1. It must be greater than 1. So, A and B, you can reject directly. So, to consider C and B only. And from the formula, we find N is 1.46. Okay, so, answer. Okay, second. Question. Now we have diagram 17 shows a boy observing a fish in a pond, right? The fish appear to be closer to the surface. So actually what the boy see is the image of the fish, uh, not the real fish, okay? So which reason is correct to explain this situation? So, so the situation here, fish appear to be closer to the surface. So what explanation is uh, the best to be give here? Is it A? B, C, O, D. A, refractive index of air greater than refractive index of water. Is it? A is 1.0, water is 1.33. Okay. Or B, speed of light in A is greater than the speed of light in water. Or C, density of A greater than density of water. Or the frequency. So answer, actually the answer is B. Yes, thank you for trying Chia Yao is greater than the speed of light in water. Okay, so when the light traveling from water to the air, it will be refracted away from normal. So the observer will see the fish appear to be closer to the surface. Okay, so Allah number three, let's try question three. We have a lot more, never mind. You can try some more. Now diagram 19, it shows the coin and its image form in a beaker filled with water. And given the refractive index is 1.33. So image is above, closer to the surface and the real object is down there. Uh, object sebenar ada di bawah, image dia kelihatan di atas. So, which combination is correct? Student, they give you real depth and apparent depth. So, how to know which pair is correct? So, this one, you can count. You must count for all using this formula. N, refractive index, equal to real depth, divide apparent depth. So, we have to check one by one. Which one of this pair give you 1.33? So, that will be the answer. So, we try for A first. A real depth 6.8, apparent depth 5. So when you divide, give you 1.36. Water here 1.33. So A is not the answer. So we try again for B. So real depth 7.6, apparent depth 5.4. And when you divide, it will give you 1.41. So this is not the answer. Okay, we are looking for 1.33. And C real depth 8.8, .8, apparent depth 6.6. .6. So now give you 1.33, yes. So to be confirmed, we check for D, 9.2 real depth, apparent depth 7.1. So it gives you 1.3 also. From here, obviously the answer is C. Apparent depth 6.6, .6, real depth 8.8, .8, give you the refractive index of water 1.33, yes. Number three, answer C. Okay, number four. Okay, number four. Uh, this diagram show light ray MN. So this is MN uh, directed to a transparent semicircular block. Critic. Actually, this one is a question on 6.2. Saya tersalah ambil tapi tak mengapa kita bolehlah bincang juga. Okay. Okay, so which direction does the ray move from point O? Okay, it say here 41 is the critical angle of the transparent block. Okay, student, critical angle is the angle of incidence 
in the glass block where the angle of refraction in the second medium is 90 degree. Okay, that is the clue. Okay, I repeat, angle of incidence, uh, critical angle 41 means uh, that is the angle of incidence in the flux block where the angle of refraction in the second medium is 90 degree. So can you tell me which one? A, B, C and D, the angle of refraction is 90 degree. Mana yang sudut dia 90 darjah? Uh, di sini, 90 degree from the normal. Is it A? Is it B, 90 degree from the normal? Is it C or is it D? So answer supposed to be C. Okay, so angle of refraction will be exactly at the boundary of the air and the semicircular block. Okay, question five. Okay, this is the apparatus related to our experiment before, if you notice. So diagram show light ray propagate through a glass block. So given here, 30 degree. Is this angle of incidence, students? Uh, is 30 degree angle of incidence? Yes or no? Answer is no. Angle of incidence actually here between the incident ray and the normal. So our angle of incidence is 60 degree. And this is our angle of refraction in the glass block. Okay, so the question is, what is the angle of refraction when given? The refractive index of the glass is 1.5. So, dia bagi refractive index N and they give you I which is 60. So, you can find R. So, how to find R? This is the formula. N equals sine I divide sine R. Okay, so sine I is 60 degree here. Okay, why 60? 90 minus 30. So, 60 degree angle of incidence. And then this is our refractive index. So, we can find sine R. Sine R, okay, so you do the reciprocal for, uh, you do F sine R, so answer is 35.2644. So here we have C, 35 degree Celsius. Uh, sorry, 35 degree. Okay, 35 degree is our angle of refraction. Okay. Okay, now question 6. Okay, student, question 6. Okay, diagram 22 shows a light ray directed uh, to a glass block. Okay, directed to a glass block. So, which statement is correct? Okay, which statement is correct? Manakah yang betul? So, this is our incident ray from A entering a glass block. Uh, there is our normal line. So, is it A, B, C or D? Uh, which one is correct? A, light refract towards the normal as it enter the glass block. Is it refract towards normal or away from normal? Uh, B, incident angle equal to refracted angle. I don't think so. I is never equal to R for refraction. C, the light travel faster as it enter glass block. Remember just now we discussed when light travel from A entering glass block, the speed will be reduced due to the glass particle. CD, brightness of light increases as it travels in the glass. There is nothing to do with the brightness. Uh, so, jawapan dia adalah A. Yes, cahaya terbias mendekati normal apabila memasuki block. Light refract towards the normal. As the speed is reduced, so the light ray will refract or bend towards normal. So, answer A, cahaya. Sorry, ya, answer is A, not D. Okay, student, last uh, question for objective, question 7. Okay, you are given diagram 18. So, this is the diagram, students. It shows light ray moving from A into glass block. So, this is our incident ray from the A entering glass block. What is the angle of incident? Incidence and the angle of refraction. So which one? We have four angles there. W, X, Y and Z. So which one is the angle of incidence? Remember where is angle of incidence lies? It is lies between incident ray and normal. Okay, it is a light. It is a ray that lies between incident ray and normal. So which means 
x is our angle of incidence and where is our angle of refraction it is an angle between the refracted ray this is our refracted ray and the normal so it is angle z so i will be x angle of incidence is x and angle of refraction will be z okay so answer is the answer will be uh, c all right Jawapan dia adalah, sorry, answer will be D, tongki. Uh, this one. Okay, answer will be tongki. Angle of incident is X, angle of refraction is Z. Okay, so before we continue with a few example of uh, structure and short essay question, what if we have a short break first, Mr. Pei, boleh tak kita berehat sebentar sebelum kita sambung dengan soalan percubaan negeri-negeri Uh, di Malaysia. Okay, so jangan ke mana-mana ke Bali selepas ini. A heart speed to the city streets We begin to feel the fire We rise like tall buildings As the chemicals they take us higher The night's young And it's just begun As she puts her hand in mine We wanna chase the night Okay, so baiklah, jom kita teruskan bersama Cikgu Hasita. Silakan Cikgu. Okay, baik. Terima kasih Mr. Pei. Sebelum itu saya kongsikan sekali lagi kepada anda semua link bahan PDF kita pada petang ini. Anda boleh download, boleh cetak keluar daripada uh, link yang kita kongsikan dan kita paparkan pada skrin sekarang. Okay. So students, let us continue with a few example of question for state trial. Kita mula dengan percubaan Negeri Terengganu. 2023. Okay, first we have diagram 2.1 there shows a student observing a pencil inside a cup and you can see the pencil appear to be bent due to phenomenon of refraction of light. So the first question selalu soalan pertama ni mesti akan tanya definisi uh, kebiasaannya lah. Okay, so what is the meaning of refraction of light? Okay, students can you respond what is meant? by refraction of light. Uh, tadi awal-awal cikgu sudah kongsi. So, refraction of light is uh, the change in speed phenomenon shows the change in speed of light or bending of light when propagating through two medium of different optical density. So, there are two keyword there. First, change in speed of light. The first keyword, change in speed of light. Or also, you can mention bending of light. The second keyword, uh, propagating two medium of different optical density. Keyword dia yang kedua adalah, uh, yang pertama, perubahan laju cahaya. Laju atau hal laju, mana-mana lah. Yang keyword yang kedua, melalui dua medium yang berbeza ketumpatan optik. So, kena tulis kedua-dua keyword ini for definition for refraction of light. Okay, second, they ask you to explain how phenomena in diagram 2.1 occur. So, explain how refraction 
section occur where it shows the pencil appear to be bent in water. So macam mana nak explain dua maka? So first you can write the light ray propagate from higher optical density to a lower optical density. So the light come from the pencil. Objek kita adalah pencil. Di bawah inilah uh, hujung pencil. So the light coming from the pencil travel through the water and finally it come out to the A. Okay, so that is our propagation of light. Dia merambat daripada air keluar ke permukaan. Udara. So we say uh, light ray propagate from higher optical density medium which is the water to a lower optical density medium which is the air. So what happened? So speed of light in air is greater than the speed of light in water. Or you can say the other way around. Speed of light in water is lower than speed of light in air. So what happened? when the light come up from the water entering A, light ray refracted away from normal. A light ray refracted away from normal. And so then finally you can say angle of incidence is less than angle of refraction or the other way around. Angle of refraction greater than angle of refraction. Actually for two mark you can write any two point. Mana-mana dua point di sini anda boleh tuliskan. Ha, kita bagi empat Lihat. We give you four option. For two marks, you can write any two point. Kalau empat maka, uh, kena tulis semualah keempat-empat. But for two marks, you can choose to write any two point. So that is what happened. So in simple way, we say first light ray propagating from higher optical density to the low optical density from water to air. Second, the light is refracted away from normal. That you can say the speed of light uh, increases from water to A and angle of refraction is smaller than angle of, uh, sorry, angle of refraction is greater than angle of incidence. Okay, C. Uh, based on diagram. 2.2 now they ask you to uh, look for diagram 2.2 complete the ray diagram to show the position of image observed by the archer fish okay so if you look at this diagram our archer fish is down there uh, down the water and this is the beetle okay but what happened the fish will see the beetle up here uh, the image of the beetle so how to draw the light ray showing this phenomenon again the phenomenon is refraction so first we draw a light from the object from the beetle entering water so the light from the beetle in a entering water refract towards normal uh, which is to the fish okay so the fish will see the image in a straight line so that's why the image of the beetle appear up there. Okay. Uh, kita lukislah garis seperti ini. First from the object, entering the fish, refract towards normal. And then from the fish, we draw a straight line, dotted line to the image. Alright. Okay, next. Uh, for two marks. Okay. Okay, seterusnya, Cikgu kita masih, ada... Uh, Cikgu masih yeah. tak, sorry. Yes. Ada gangguan sikit. Yeah. Kita ada... Ada pelajar yang minat untuk naik konti untuk jawabkan suka soalan bersama Cikgu Hasita. Uh, Cikgu, Cikgu oh, Chaya. Oh boleh, boleh. Uh, okay. uh, Chaya. Okay. Dan Chaya. ada lagi seorang pelajar, okay. Pelajar atau guru. Eng okay. Chow Miu. So kita naikkan mereka untuk jawabkan soalan lagi. Okay. Okay. Boleh Cikgu? Uh, boleh, boleh, boleh. Okay. Okay. Oh ni adik-beradik ni Chaya dengan Chia Ying. Alright. Okay, <laughs> boleh ya? Eh? Boleh jawab? Boleh cuba jawab. Okay, soalan kedua. Awal second question. We have diagram 5.1, ini 5.1 and then down here diagram 5.2. It shows uh, the position of the image uh, that is located at the base of the glass block and a diamond. So up here we have glass block. Uh, di bawah ni kita ada intan lah diamond block. Okay the glass block and the diamond block has a different refractive index. Okay dia bagi refractive index untuk glass block uh, 1.52. Okay, refractive index for diamond uh, 2.42. Okay, so first what is meant by refractive index? Apa itu index biasan? Uh, tadi kalau dengar cikgu cakap tadi mesti tahu jawab. Boleh jawab tak? Cia Yao, Cia Ying. Apa itu index biasan? What is meant by refractive index? Uh. Cahaya. Cahaya. Uh, 
Cuba baca jawapan dia. Okay. Can you read the answer? Uh, so it is the ratio. Uh, ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light. In Cahaya dalam menu. Okey betul. Nisbah laju cahaya dalam vacuum kepada laju cahaya dalam menu. So itu adalah indeks biasa. Okey soalan kedua. Mengapa sinar cahaya mengalami pembengkokan? Why do light ray bend when travelling from glass into air in diagram 4.1? Uh, 5.1. So you can see uh, the light is coming from the object. Once it entering the air, it is bent. Uh, dia Bengkok kepada arah yang lain. Kenapa? So this is because the speed of light increases uh, when propagating from higher optical density which is the glass to a lower optical density medium which is the air. Kenapa dia bengkok? Kerana laju cahaya bertambah apabila merambat daripada medium berketempatan optik tinggi ke medium berketempatan optik rendah. Okay, itu reason dia. Okay, okay, next. Okay, ini ada bandingkan. Okay, you have to, ini soalan ni senang saja. Boleh cuba uh, bandingkan. Observe diagram 5.1, 5.2. Compare uh, the refractive index of the glass edge. Okay, cuba bandingkan index biasan kaca dengan intent. Mana yang lebih tinggi, mana lebih rendah. Uh, kaca 1.52. Intan 2.42. Mana lebih tinggi? Kaca atau intan? Intan. Intan. Bagus. So answer dia betul eh. Uh, intan. So answer is diamond. Uh, refractive index for glass. Smaller compared to diamond. Oh you can say the other way around. Index biasan intan lebih tinggi daripada kaca. Okay. Sekarang bandingkan dalam ketara. Apparent depth. So where to see? Check my arrow. Uh, this one the apparent depth. Uh, siapa lagi tinggi? Siapa lagi rendah? Apparent depth. Uh, tengok arrow mana Inesh. lagi panjang, mana lagi pendek. Uh, so Inesh. you can say apparent depth in diagram 5.1 is greater, uh, lebih besar. 5.1 lebih besar daripada 5.2. Kedalaman ketara bagi image 5.1 lebih besar daripada 5.2. Okay now compare the refracted angle. This is the refracted angle. Compare. Uh, this to which angle is greater, which angle is smaller. Sudut mana yang lebih besar? 5.1 ke lebih besar? 5.2 lebih besar? Uh, 5.2. 5.2 lebih besar. Okay, bagus. Very good. So we say uh, refracted angle in 5.1 is less then 5.2 or you can say the other way around. Uh, refracted angle in 5.2 is greater than in 5.1. Okay. So ini senang banding saja mana yang lebih besar, mana yang lebih uh, kecil. Okay then based on our answer you are asked to state the relationship between uh, refractive index with apparent depth. So just now we say when the refractive index increases so apparent depth decrease. Here yeah, diamond higher refractive index but it has a lower apparent depth. So we say refractive index increases, apparent depth decrease. Bila indeks biasan bertambah, dalam ketara berkurang. Okay, next. Uh, relationship between refractive index and refracted angle. So you can see refractive index increases, refracted angle increase. Okay, bila indeks biasan bertambah, Sudut biasan juga bertambah. Okay and this one E sekarang kita nak kira. Ada calculator tak tu Ciaya? Boleh tolong kira. Calculate the apparent depth of the image scene. Okay dia bagi uh, ketinggian bongkar 4 cm. So 4 cm ni adalah dalam sebenar. Dalam nyata real depth. Okay and they give you N is 2.42. So find the apparent depth of the image. Image. So this is the formula. N 2.42. Real depth 4 cm. Uh, so can you find the apparent depth? Uh, find H. Berapa nilai H? Uh, cuba kira. Simple mathematics. So how to find H? 4 divide 
42 so you'll find H 4 bagi dengan 2.42 so jawapan dia uh, you akan dapat 1.6529 cm okay this is the apparent depth of the image seen alright Okay, then students. Next question, percubaan negeri Kelantan. I think this is our last question for today. Uh, 11.1, this is 11.1 and 11.2 shows light ray from A moving into material X. Kita ada material X, 11.1 and 11.2 we have material Y. Alright, okay. Then the question is observe diagram 11.1 and 11 okay anda lihat perhatikan kedua-dua gambar okay first they ask you to compare the incident angle bandingkan sudut tujuh ini sudut tujuh dia berapa 11.1 berapa sudut tujuh dia ciayau ciaying ha, atas ni berapa 40 darjah ini pun 40 darjah Okay, then bandingkan sudut biasa. This is the angle of refraction. Here is 25 and down here is 15. Okay, then uh, what is the relationship between speed of light and refracted angle? And then third, uh, relationship between refractive index and this. So kita tulis satu-satu first. We compare the angle of incidence. So you can say... Angle of incident in diagram 11.1 equal to that in 11.2. Sudut 7 rajah 11.1 sama dengan 11.2. Dua-duanya 40. So kita kata sama. Second, compare the angle of uh, refraction. So you can say the refracted angle in diagram 11.1 is greater than 11.2. Sudut biasan rajah 11.1 lebih besar daripada 11.2. So we are comparing. Third, compare the speed of light uh, in both diagram. Yang mana lebih laju? So speed of light in diagram 11.1 is greater compare to the speed of light in diagram uh, 11.2. Laju cahaya dalam 11.1 itu adalah Uh, mana betul tak? Lebih tengok sini anda boleh bandingkan. Ini 1.937. Uh, yang ini dia bagi 1.20. So 1.9, this one 1.2. Uh, so 11.1 greater than 11.2. Okay then third, uh, relate speed and angle of refraction. So we see uh, when speed of light increases, so angle of refraction increases. Ha, bila laju cahaya bertambah, sudut pembiasan juga adalah bertambah. Okay. okay. Then the fifth answer, relate refractive index with optical density. So ini dia punya refractive index 1.452, uh, 1.11.1 uh, and refractive index for material weight is 2.48. So how do we relate? We say uh, when the ref Refractive index increases, so optical density increases. Apabila indeks biasan bertambah, ketumpatan optik adalah bertambah. Okay, so ini contoh soalan 5 markah di bahagian C. Alright, okay, so anda baca saja. You just read through the question carefully and just give uh, what is given. So normally for this question, it will ask you for three comparison and to write to relationship. Okay, soalan terakhir C. Okay, uh, we have diagram 11.3 show incomplete ray diagram. Uh, satu gambar raja yang tidak lengkap. Our incident A is here, angle of incidence. Here, 60 degree. Uh, 30 degree is not angle of incidence. Our angle of incidence here, 60 degree. It entering material Y and then entering material X. So you have to explain how light ray travel to material Y and material X and complete the ray diagram for both substances. Tadi kita dapat dua material sini X and Y. Uh, sekarang kita letakkan mereka bersama-sama. Combine them, uh, put them next to one and another and we incident a light through them. So anda lihat. So how? Okay, so this is how we explain. First, light ray entering material Y is refracted towards normal. 
as optical density is higher than A. So daripada sini, dia akan refract towards normal if you draw. Okay, so from here, it will be refract towards normal. Okay, you draw the arrow as well. Okay, then second, a light ray entering material X is refracted away from normal as optical density of X is lower than Y. So to draw, you draw the normal line first here. Uh, lukis garis normal di sini. Uh, sorry, cikgu. Pakai mouse ni. So lukisan saya tak berapa cantik. You ambil pemaris. You draw normal line here. So you draw refracted away. Uh, dia keluar. Refracted away. From Y to X, refracted away. Okay, then. Next. Okay, this is how to find uh, the third and fourth mark when you draw the uh, ray diagram. Ini yang lebih cantik lah. Maka yang ketiga anda lukis uh, pembiasan yang berlaku di bahan Y and then maka keempat pembiasan yang berlaku di bahan X. For third and fourth mark, you draw the light ray shows refraction occur in Y and also in X. Okay. So I guess that's all for today. Itu saja latihan kita untuk hari ini. Okay, jadi terima kasih. We have Jisoo also there. Uh, Jisoo Tide. Hello. Uh, kalau anda tertinggal, don't don't worry. You have, you can watch back this video and also you can download uh, the PDF slide. We share the link in the live chat before. Boleh cek tak? Okay, I guess that's all for today. Day. Alhamdulillah itu saja masa yang kita ada. Uh, thank you Chia Yao and Chia Ying uh, joining our conti today. <laughs> Nak bagi mereka peluang cakap ke Mr. Pei? Boleh. Saya serahkan ya. kembali kepada moderator. Okey silakan Mr. Pei. Okey so uh, terima kasihlah kepada semua okay. yang. Chia Yao uh, nak cakap sesuatu hmm. boleh? Kita bagi peluang ya, tentang ini. Boleh. <laughs> so macam mana dia punya kertas paper, paper 3? Yang belum selesai siap selesai sekarang. Yang masih kerabu, yang masih kerabu tekan sekarang. Yang sudah merah, <laughs> yang sudah kerabu jangan tekan lagi. <laughs> okay, thank you for your support, Chia Yao. Chia Ying, ni nak cakap sesuatu ke? Okay, kalau tidak kita serahkan semula kepada Mr. Pei. Okay, so uh, mereka okay, nak tambah apa-apa? Kalau tidak saya boleh uh, tinggalkan mereka? Ada apa boleh, perkataan boleh, yang tanpa? Boleh, boleh. Okay, so hmm. saya just uh, terima kasihlah kepada penyertaan uh, anda kepada sesi soal tadi. Okay. Okay, so terima kasih kepada Cikgu Hasita. Uh, selesailah kelas kita pada petang ini. So tanya dan terima kasih kepada semua yang mengikuti kelas kita dari awal sehingga sekarang. Okay so sila klik like dan share link kelas kita hari ini kepada rakan-rakan di media sosial anda. Mudah-mudahan belajar boleh kebahagiaan di atas perkongsian tersebut. Dan jangan lupa ikuti kelas fizik seterusnya pada setiap Jumaat. Semas tengah untuk kelas tingkatan lima dan ahad pukul dua untuk tingkatan empat. Uh, tetapi kita akan bercuti, okay, uh, dua bercuti, minggu. Betul. Uh, so kita akan sama balik uh, Januari. So sekiranya ada cikgu-cikgu panitia Ayu nak buatkan mungkin kelas tambahan, live ke, uh, mungkin anda semua boleh uh, perhatikanlah channel cikgu, channel cikgu Ayu pan, uh, panitia fizik. Okay, Uh, so sebelum cikgu tambahkan kelas petang ini, so cikgu bersilakan cikgu uh, Hasita nak tambahkan sepakat, sepatah dua kata. Okey sedikit saja daripada saya. Alhamdulillah terima kasih kepada semua yang telah join kelas kita pada petang ini daripada awal sehinggalah ke saat ini. So harapan kita anda teruskanlah bersama-sama kami di Akademi Youtuber tapi macam Mr. Pei bagi tahu kita akan bercuti selama tiga minggu ya Mr. Pei. Kita cuti tiga minggu oh, dan kita tiga. akan kembali, kembali lagi bersama anda Januari nanti. So kita akan teruskan dengan kelas ulang kaji untuk tingkatan lima dan kita akan teruskan dengan topik tingkatan empat yang belum habis lagi. Nanti akan disambung sebelum oleh Mr. Pei dengan tajuk enam perpuluhan dua. 
uh, total internal reflection. So uh, jangan lupa terus ikuti kami sebab itu anda kena subscribe channel Cikgu Hasnita, channel Cikgu Peh dan semua cikgu-cikgu fizik yang ada di video supaya anda tidak terlepas peluang untuk mengikuti kelas-kelas yang seterusnya. Dan layari juga www.academyyoutuber.com di sana anda boleh lihat jadual kelas-kelas uh, mingguan yang ada pada setiap minggu. So terima kasih. Thank you for joining us. Semoga kita berjumpa lagi dalam kelas-kelas yang akan datang. Terima kasih. Okay so terima kasih kepada semua penyokong Akademi Tuber. Doakan kami terus kuat dan bersemangat untuk membantu dalam membangunkan pendidikan di Malaysia. So sekian daripada kami. Salam hormat dan jumpa lagi. Okay so bye-bye.